ANC veteran and former Deputy Secretary General Cheryl Carolus will address an intergenerational women's dialogue on Mamwini Matikizela Mandela's banishment to Branford. This as part of the United Democratic Front's 40th anniversary celebrations. Branford was officially renamed Winnie Mandela in 2021 by the then Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture and is a small town in the Lejuelibutua region of the Free State. Carolus hopes to inspire the youth to reflect on Mamwini's struggle for transformation and accountability. She joins us now to discuss further. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your time this morning. Perhaps let's start with characterizing or understanding or helping us understand more intimately the relationship historically between Umamwini Matikizela Mandela and the UDF, more so in 1989 when the then UDF Secretary Murphy Morobe uh, said that the movement is cutting ties with Umamwini Matikizela Mandela for violating human rights in the name of her struggle against apartheid and the movement urged black, the black population rather to distance itself from her. How should we understand the relationship? Good morning to you and to all the listeners. Uh, the relationship, as you can see, at the time of Mamuni's uh, departure, leaving us when she uh, passed on, was a very healthy one. And I think that, too, is, a, is very instructive in terms of how we view ourselves as human beings, uh, our own flaws sometimes, but also our own ability to be inclusive and forgiving and accepting we are humans. At the end of Mum Winnie's days, she was still a fierce fighter for accountability and for transformation. I think we all remember that. And that is how we will remember Mum Winnie today. That notwithstanding in the course of struggle, we may have disagreements and sometimes very strong ones, but we walk a journey of uh, forgiveness, we walk a journey of inclusivity, and we are all back in the trenches. So I will today with sadness remember Mamwini's passing and the fact she's no longer with us, but I will have no reservations about how she closed the eyes, fully aligned with all of us in addressing the wrongs which are, which are still remaining today after apartheid, and how we address the newer wrongs that some amongst us in our own ranks are making themselves guilty of. So that will be what we will be doing today and what we will be remembering. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the words, um, what is standing in the course of the struggle, and you mentioned that uh, right to her last day, um, she was fiercely passionate that the liberation project remained incomplete without economic freedom. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about what is standing in the course of the struggle, is it worth noting or taking into consideration the who as well is standing in the course of the struggle when you consider that South Africa in 2023 is characterized as the most most unequal society in the world, where life for the majority of people in this country has not shifted. Exactly, and in fact, the gaps are growing bigger uh, between the haves and the have-nots. And I must just hasten to say that we're not alone in this in South Africa. It's a global phenomenon. But our message today will also be one that we cannot sit and be passive in this a uh, new journey that we need to. We need to use the institutions that our democracy and our constitution places in front of us. Uh, institutions such as school governing bodies, institutions such as community policing forums, institutions such as ward committees. We are not present in those structures. And then we are quick to point fingers or even sometimes burn things down. And we want to say we can do things uh, to hold people to account. We're not using those, and we must not let the wrongdoers get away. And we must act in support where there are good school principals, where there are good ward councillors, where there are good heads of police stations. Those ones must never worry about us. They must know that we will support them as active citizens in our communities. And the ones who should be very afraid of are the ones who are doing wrong in the name of our struggle and in the name of transformation. They are stealing money and abusing the power and authority they have. So that's what today is about. We are planting a vegetable garden to say 
we too can do our own bits in our own backyards. We will, in fact, be doing a fun run. We will say, in sport, let us also join up there to ensure we support our sports women and men. We support Paniana, we support Coach Desiree, we support our netball pro tier girls. And so we are saying we are people who have some power, that people like Mamwini went to their graves, Mama Dora Tamana, Helen Joseph, Mamlele Ngoi, Mamrahima Musa, and that Mam Sophie the Brain is still fighting for today. And so it's that message to say, let us not allow the few wrongdoers to in fact speak for us and act in our name. Let us claim back our power. That's the message we are spreading. And I'm not just doing it in Bradford. I was in Kimberley on Wednesday. Today, Popo Malefe is in fact in, uh, in the Northwest province, in Rustenburg. Murphy Morobe is in fact in Mpumalanga, in Bethel. And we are honoring those who paid a huge price and inspiring those who come after us to say, pick up the baton. Mamwini Matikizela Mandela does not have a statue in the heart of Santon. She does not have an airport named after her. Um, only in 2021, Branford was uh, renamed Winnie Mandela. She does have an informal settlement named after her. And these are the very people that she refused to leave. And she lived in Soweto till her last days. And so what is it that she will be telling young people about this woman? Well, I'll not just be saying about Mamwini, because I think she personifies the Dora Tamanas, the Amanda Kwadis, the Victorian Kwanges, many, many that she consistently reminded people. It wasn't just about one person, but we will be speaking about those values that all of them, Mamwini included, personified, and that is one about being with our people, never, never forgetting who our people are, the price at which they brought us to where we are today, and inspiring us to our last days to be activists for transformation and to hold those who, have carrying, who are carrying our votes, that they must appreciate that as the most precious thing we have in our country today. What will it take to transform South Africa? Active citizenry. I think we can't be quiet. Where there's good, we must join the good and support it. Where there is blatant wrongdoing, we must not be silenced, and we must support whistleblowers and those who, in fact, have stood up and today are living in terror. There's Babita Dekoran, years now since she's been killed, and no movement on her case. And that's what we were saying. That's what it will take, is to do what we did when we defeated the apartheid war machine with the caspers and with the bullets and with the tear gas. Caspers, bullets and tear gas still ring in present day South Africa. You need only think of what just recently happened in the city of Cape Town where some people had to work, walk rather, for kilometers on end um, to get home, um, where people were stranded because they didn't have a mode of transport. Politics aside, when we talk about transforming South Africa, systematically, what needs to happen? We as South Africans must, in fact, occupy the democratic institutions that has been created through our constitution. And we can't just get to a point where we are so angry that we engage in activities which I think should not be our first port of call in a democratic South Africa. Why is it that in our township schools we do not have functional school, school governing bodies? We can't blame the regime of then or now for that. Why are we not, in fact, in our community policing forums? Why are we not engaging with taxi drivers if we have any concerns about them? Why do we wait until they do wrong things before we get angry with them? We, this is not the way that we, bro that we brought freedom to ourselves. This is not the way that we created the conditions for a new constitution. And that is really what we want to invoke people to do. And there will be disagreements. There will be robust engagements. And so they should be, because this is a democracy today. Cheryl Carolus is with the United Democratic Front. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your time this morning.